In this Magoosh ACT video, we are going to talk about a specific, particularly tricky question type that you will see again and again on the ACT science section. I call these questions the yes, no, because questions, because the answer choices will give you a series of statements that begin with yes or no, followed by a given rationale for that answer. This video is going to give you a very specific strategy to follow that will make these questions much easier and much faster for you to complete. So basically these questions are structured like this. We have a question and then two pairings of answer choices. Two choices typically begin with yes and the other two begin with no. Most of the time, although not always, what I call the rationales, the because parts, are repeated and mixed and matched with the yes and the no so that the test ends up creating four different potential answer choices out of two different rationales. So you can see that I've done that here with the x's and the y's. The rationale in A and C are the same and B and D. But what makes them different answer choices are the yes and the no part. So we have four answer choices created out of two different options for the rationale. Now a lot of students spend a lot of time reading and rereading a question of this type because they often tend to be longer and they tend to include a lot more information than some of the other questions you will face, but you just don't have that kind of time on the ACT. So instead, this video is going to walk you through a four-step process to tackle these types of questions. And hopefully we're going to be breaking them down into something that is more manageable for you to complete. So step one is to go straight to the rationale part of the answer choices and determine which are factually correct based on the information given. So let's take a look at how this works on a real ACT question. The question answer choices you see on your screen here are from question number 23 from the full length ACT practice test that is available in the preparing for the ACT guide on the ACT student website. So if you'd like to pause the video to go to the official ACT website and download this and follow along, go ahead and do that. But I do promise to put all the relevant information from the passage on the screen so you can follow along. You'll notice that I've covered up the question. So you naturally may be thinking, what the heck? I have no idea what the passage says. I have no idea what the question even says. And I have no idea what these answer choices mean, but that's okay. I am going to show you the parts of the passage you need to answer this question in just a minute. But part of my reason for doing this and presenting the question in this way is to show you that you can in fact answer ACT science questions without fully knowing what's going on. Heck, sometimes you may have no idea what's going on and that is okay, you can still do it. So right now we're just focused on step one of this four step process to answering these questions and that is to read the rationales and the answer choices so we can determine which are factually true based on the passage once we look. So our two options are at a value of 0.2 milliliters of titrant added, the sample solution was yellow and at a value of 1.8 milliliters of titrant added, the sample solution was blue. So that's our first one here. The second one, appears in answer choice B and switches it up a little. At a value of 0.2 milliliters of titrant added, the sample solution was blue. Notice in the first one it was yellow. And at a value of 1.8 milliliters of titrant added, the sample solution was yellow. And in the first one it was blue. So you can see that these rationales are mixed and matched with the yeses and the noes to create four answer choices. So again, we have A and C have the same pairings of yellow and blue and B and C have the same pairings of blue and yellow. So basically, we need to know that if at a value of 0.2 milliliters and 1.8 milliliters of titrant added, what was the color of the solution? Was it yellow or blue? If we can determine which of these is correct, then we will be able to eliminate two answer choices without even needing to know what the question is or whether the answer is yes or no. Okay, so here is the graph from the passage that the question wants us to look at. So let's first just concentrate on the graph because it gives us all the information we need to determine whether the solution is yellow or blue. So remember, we're looking at where the volume of titrant added is at 0.2 milliliters. So that would be about right here and at 1.8 milliliters. So that would be about right here. Now we need to look for what indicates yellow or blue. And we can find that in the key here. 
which shows us that the dotted lines is yellow and the dashed lines is blue. So if we look at our graph, we can see that at 0 0.2, we have the dotted lines, so the solution would be yellow. And at 1.8, we have the dashed lines, so the solution would be blue. So now the next step in our process is to take this information and eliminate any answer choices in which the rationale is not factually correct. All right, so let's get back to our answer choices. So remember we determined that at 0 0.2, the solution was yellow, and 1.8, it was blue. So we can now eliminate B and D entirely because they said that at 0 0.2 it was blue and 1.8 it was yellow. So without even ever having read the question, you can still take a 50-50 guess with what remains, choices A and C, and I don't know about you, but I kind of like those odds. But we're gonna finish answering the question like a good ACT student, so step three is to read the question to determine what you're actually looking to answer. We're gonna try to figure out an answer, whether it's actually yes or no. Okay, so let's finally take a look at our question. So our question is, a chemist claimed that in experiment two, the pH of the sample solution was greater at a value of 0 0.2 milliliters of titrant added than at a value of 1.8 milliliters of titrant added. Do the results of experiment two support this claim? Now we need to figure out the yes or the no. Okay, so our chemist is claiming that the pH of the sample solution was greater at 0 0.2, and then it would be less at a value of 1.8. So let's go back to the passage and figure out what it tells us about pH, because that is the new key term that's being introduced here. So I've copied the graph here again on your screen that we used to determine whether the solution was yellow or blue, and I've also copied the relevant piece of the passage that gives us the information we need on pH. So if you were encountering this on your own on the ACT, you would skim the passage to find the key term pH. So let's do that. And oh, I found it right here at the end. OK, so this last sentence here is the key piece of information that we need. An acid base indicator of nitrogen yellow was also used. Nitrazine yellow is yellow if the pH is less than 6.0, or blue if the pH is greater than 7.0. So let's sort out the information that we've compiled so far. Okay, so we know that at 0 0.2 milliliters of titrant added, the solution is yellow, and we can tell from up here in the information in the passage that that would be a pH of less than 6. And at 1.8, it's blue, and the pH would be greater than 7. So keep this in your head. Yellow, lower pH, blue, higher pH. So now we're on to our final step to determine what the answer would be. Is it yes or is it no? And then we are going to find it right now. Let's go back to our question. So I'll write the information we figured out on the other slide here. 0 0.2, yellow and that was a lower pH, and 1.8 blue, and that was a higher pH. But our chemist here thinks that the pH was higher when it was at 0 0.2, so poor little chemist, he's not right. We figured out that the pH is lower at a value of 0 0.2 milliliters, which means that our answer is A. The results of experiment two do not support this claim, our chemist is wrong, and we've figured it out. So this is a little bit of a trickier question, but we've made it much easier on ourselves by going to the rationales first, eliminating what didn't work, so we only have to decide yes or no in our second step. So as I've already mentioned, if you couldn't determine what the answer is, if you weren't sure yes or no, what's this chemist talking about, you can still give yourself a good pat on the back for quickly getting it down to two answer choices and doubling your odds of getting it right. So let's take a look at one more example. This is number 40 from that same free preparing for the ACT guide. Again, I'm covering up the question because we don't even want to worry about it at first. All we want to look at is the rationale that we see in our answer choices. So here are our two options. B 
because as frequency increases, S increases, or because as frequency increases, S remains constant. And you can see that those are, again, mixed and matched between the yeses and the noes between two different answer choices. So you might be asking yourself, what's S? I promise to tell you in just a minute, but I also once again wanted to make sure to show you that it really doesn't matter for this question whether we know what S actually is or not. All we need to do is find S on the graph and check to see whether it increases or remains constant as frequency is increasing. So here's the relevant diagram from the passage for this question. So I know that this might look a little strange taken out of context, so let me just give you a teeny bit of background information since I know I'm not showing you the whole passage here. This is a diagram showing the human threshold of hearing and pain in both air and water. So the frequency that you see here refers to the frequency of sound. And this experiment is looking at when a human can hear a sound at a given frequency and when it becomes too painful to listen to. And S is actually the percent increase in air density and water density at the different levels the scientists are testing. But as I mentioned, none of that really matters all that much for this question. You really don't need to know what S is. All you need to know is what is happening to the line marked S. So we need to find the two key terms. Frequency, we've already found that, and S. And look, we've got a bunch of S's up here. But since the question didn't ask us, to discriminate between these S's, we can just go ahead and take a look at them all. So you can see that each S line is a vertical line. It doesn't change as the frequency increases. The frequency is increasing this way. And all these vertical lines are just staying at the same level of intensity. So in other words, it remains constant. So that means that our answer to the rationale is that as frequency increases, S remains constant. It's not increasing. So we can eliminate both F and H. And once again, we have a 50-50 chance of getting this question right. And our question is that based on the figure, does S depend on the frequency of a sound wave of a given intensity? Well, this one's a bit easier, isn't it? Because S doesn't change, it's not going to be dependent on the frequency. That's the definition of constant. So we can answer no, and we have our answer, J. So as a review, once again, here's the four-step process to tackling these difficult yes, no, because questions. First, go straight to the rationale part of the answer choices and determine which of them are factually correct based on the information given. Two, Eliminate any answer choices in which the rationale is not factually correct. And three, read the question to determine what you are actually looking to answer. And number four, determine whether the answer would be yes or no and select the correct answer, and you are done. Finally, I just wanted to point out that this pattern is also repeated on some other questions on the test that have answers other than yes or no. So maybe the question will ask you whether something is less or greater rather than yes or no. But you'll see that the four answer choices will be created out of these two rationales. You're going to see this again and again on the ACT. So our process is going to be the same. In a few cases, it might be easier for you to determine yes or no, but most of the time, it's the rationales that are going to present the facts, and you want to look at those first to quickly eliminate some answer choices based on the facts that are presented in the passage, and then worry about the questions that require a little bit of higher level thinking. It's also worth pointing out that I've also seen questions on the test where the rationales aren't repeated, but they're different for each answer choice. And I've actually been able to get the right answer without even reading the question, which seems ridiculous, but nevertheless, it's true. So make sure to be looking for all opportunities you have to employ the strategy so that it can help you more easily manage some of the most difficult questions on the ACT science test.